Next up then, I've got the side panels to fit. This one should be fairly straightforward because it is just in one piece. But this one, because it's gonna be sort of a built-in cabinet, it's gonna take a little bit more titivation. Anyway, for here, what I've done so far, I've put the original one back in and I'm just using this as a template. So I've actually just sort of cut off a little bit here and there just to get it to fit a little bit more perfect around the wheel arch. So it's actually pretty much spot on all on these sort of sections here. But then where I've added a bit of extra tape, as you can see, it's just uh, gonna allow me to find the exact line I need. And I've also got a few numbers, and these are my original numbers, and I was just double checking them. So that one there, I've actually gone to eight millimeters add-on rather than six. And obviously at this point here, you can see I've got all this tape which just comes down. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I'll just pull this belt out of the way. I'm actually gonna, well that tape's crushed there. So I'm following the line of the door all the way down, but I'm just gonna keep that straight to that point. So that is the next task. And once that's done, I'm gonna take it outside, lay it down on a new sheet of six mil ply, cut it out, get it perfect, and then carpet it and get it fit. Simple. Right, the first dry fit. I'm not expecting it to go perfectly straight away, but what I have done is, if you can see there, I have actually taken off the seat belt attachment point there because then I can slide it in place and then all I'm gonna do is hopefully do one drill hole and just slot that in, put it on afterwards once it's all done and finished. So, let's see where we are with it. Whoa, and I've trapped a wire, which I do not wanna damage. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what, that is, Perfect. I'm almost ready with this. I've done the seat belt attachment hole there, which obviously just needs to go around that, allowing enough space for the seat belt to actually sort of fit in properly. And the next thing is this section here, which goes around the plastic that sits there. Now, this is the plastic one that came off originally, and whoever took this off to fit the actual panels in the first place, tore off, if you can see, all of the clips. So that will not, sorry, it's that way up, clip back in. So I've had to order a new set and these have come direct from Volkswagen and obviously they're nice and clean and new. And as you can see, they have got the clips on there. Well, I say they've got the clips on, they've got the lugs to take the clips. Now these two plastic for the left side and the right side cost me well, altogether, they came to £33.29. Now, each side is £10.23 each, direct from Volkswagen. But the clips themselves, this tiny little bag of literally nothing, cost £7.28. £7.28 for that. Anyway, it will obviously add to the overall sort of... Uh, pristine look that I'm going for so it's definitely worth sort of buying them but yeah those clips annoying but I ordered them yesterday and they came today so I am happy and now I just need to fit it in position there and then we need to just scribe around it to make sure that we can get it absolutely perfect then I can carpet it then we can get it fit done right I think that's gonna be something like, it's not the easiest one to do, but we'll soon find out.
I fit this in properly now and I've offered it up and I've still got a tiny little scribe mark that I need to cut off. Once that's done, it's pretty much there apart from these. I need to set an awesome set of speakers and I've never had a car with decent sound system so I'm hoping these will just add a little bit to it and these are some JBL Club 9632s, you can see that. So they've got a, I think it's a three-way speaker system so obviously it's got the tweeters and what have you in there so hopefully I can have a nice sing-song ink car. Anyway, I've uh, offered this up in place because that's sitting somewhere there and I've measured off where I need it to sort of sit on this and obviously off this bottom section so then I just need to go mark it out and cut a hole in this piece of wood. I'm finally ready to carp it and I've cut a piece which is just a couple of inches larger all the way around just so I can wrap it over the back. I have used the fixings here which are for the speaker and I've actually glued them on and I'm going to carp it over the top of those and then wrap it over. So that will help hold them in place as well and obviously once the screw's in it'll be nice and solid. I've got a few holes, one there, a couple up here, that's for the seat belt there and then this one which are to attach it to the actual van. So I've actually put some rivet nuts in. Boom, there we go. <laughs> Ow, that hurts the smile. Well, that went very smoothly and it is a very neat finish. All I need to do now is attach some insulation to the back and I'm gonna use some of that space quilt stuff again because obviously it is a pretty good insulator and it is gonna work very well as a vapor barrier, a vapor barrier as well. So, another job to do. <laughs> it doesn't ever stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's the insulation done perfectly to fit all the way around and then at this point here is where the metal stanchion runs so I just need to obviously keep it back there because this I want to press really nice and tight obviously where the seat belt goes tight up against that stanchion there we go I think I'm done I've got the speaker cut out done perfectly and I've actually stuck this on with some contact adhesives just so it's one solid unit as you can see and I've also, where there's a, an attachment point, I've just uh, done a bit of a cutout as well there. And the other ones on this side are actually free just to stick straight on. So, <laughs> ah, let's go see if it works. I've just filled this void in with a little bit more insulation because obviously the more insulation, the better. And it's going to keep me and the lovely little bluey dog even warmer. So all I've done is stick some of that on with some contact adhesive and obviously once the board's in place it's going to hold it all there anyway. So now it's time to properly test and see if it fits. Come on then. Come on. There is no going back now. I'm just using the same fixings I've used before. Can you see that? You can't see that. It's about a 30 mil Allen key. Sort of dome headed one, so it's nice and smooth over the top. <laughs> I 
where this lines up. It's definitely a bit tighter. This is just touching the side of the board at the minute. And it's because obviously you carp it and it moves everything by a couple of millimetres. Beautiful. That is honestly perfect. It is really, really good is that. Right, next fixing hole. I've got to feel where it is. Just put a little slice in the carpet. And then let's hope again we can actually get it in. Yes, straight in. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> I'm getting cocky, aren't I? I think um, I may have spoken too soon. Because you just never know. Oh, I don't like feeling like that. I feel like I'm cross-threading it. I'll take that out a second. Well, I'm not going to lie, that was a complete nightmare. I'd put one of the bolts in and it had basically sort of cross-threaded and then started to turn the actual rivet nut off the metalwork. So they were then bound together and I couldn't get the thing off again. So it took a bit of effort and I had to end up pulling it back through the metalwork and then I've hammered the metalwork back, put another nut rivet in and now it's take two. So just double check everything looks okay. I think we're right this time. I bloody hope so. Yeah, that's damaged on the end. Let's get rid of that. Start again, nice new one. No, I'm not gonna make the same mistake again. There we go, in she goes. In she goes. Right, that's that one done. Now let's move to this side. I'm gonna eye it through this time. Make sure we're going in the right place. Right, just fitting back the seat belt. I just need the special tool for it. Just need to make sure that it goes in perfectly well, nice and solid and flat, because this is something you can't cut corners with. Perfect, right, let's just do, give it another tighten just to make sure. Yep, clip on. Woof, there we go. Well, there we have it. The side panel is on, fully insulated, and I did have a little bit of a fight with it, but I've made it work, and I've got to say, it is about perfect, it really is. If you look here, I've got the detail against this door here. And that is just perfectly running down there. And then all this round here, you can just see that is just tight all the way around that. Got the speaker to go in, speaker wire there. And then the detail over the top of the wheel arch. This is where it starts getting interesting. So I can utilize more of the capacity of this brain of mine to design and make some cool stuff. So I have this red cupboard here, which I purchased about, I'm gonna say three years ago from an army surplus store and it cost me 20 quid. I didn't know what I was gonna use it for, but I just knew that it would come in handy at some point. And this is it, it's gonna go in my van. So a beautiful metal cupboard, which is actually aluminium. So it's pretty lightweight, which is good to put in the van. So you're not dragging around a load of heavy stuff. And if you notice this big post here, that's just an old oak post, which I've also utilized for putting something in the van. And I'm gonna show you now why. So take my shoes off and let's get in here. So I've completed the panel behind me and the next job is to do the panel on the other side. And this, or oh, that cupboard there is going to be my office. And this is where it's gonna sit. So hopefully you can see that. But I've been busy and I have made this sort of surround which is gonna fit this cupboard into. 
the surround is going to get carpeted and then fit to this sort of uh, wall somehow and then the red cupboard's going to slot into it and then it's got like a drop down section which is going to be a table and that then is going to be my little office. So I've had to make it just slightly bigger than the cupboard itself because I am going to carpet it so I needed to think about a layer of carpet wrapping around there top and bottom and sides so it's a few millimeters bigger and then hopefully it'll just fit perfectly and slot straight in. I need it to sit into that alcove because I'm sorry to say it guys but every inch matters. So it just allows this cupboard not to project out too far because I still need to think about possibly getting a bike through here so obviously it doesn't want to come out too far at all. I have scribed, let me just show you, if you can see here I've scribed it all the way down at this point and I've left a little bit of a gap as well because that just allows some insulation to slot behind it and the same at this side. As you can see, I've got all my electrics running into this anyway, so I'm going to have all my switches running out of the panel along here, which hopefully will just have a, a line of switches to switch all my lights on. I've got my 240 volt here, so that's going to go into the back of the cupboard as well, so that just allows me to charge everything I need, and obviously then I can run that uh, computer monitor off the back of it. What else? So to get it to fit, what I've done is... If you can see, and this is where that oak post comes in, I've just um, made some oak wedges and I've glued them in place and they should be all set now. And prior to gluing them, I put in a couple of holes already pre-drilled so I can actually put some mechanical fixings as well into it because really the weight of all this plus the cupboard and the contents is going to be hanging off that. So I'm going to use some self-tapping fixings there which are long enough to go through and into the metal work above here and that will be definitely strong enough. So now I'm going to remove the outer casing and I'm going to fit the six self-tapping screws through these oak wedges into the bodywork and then that just allows this to be screwed into the oak wedges. That's the plan, so let's get on with it. Right, let's see if these will go in. The first one. Perfect that. I've countersunk them as well so they're going to be lost in there so it's not going to push the actual cupboard thing down. Oh, my battery's died. Oh dear, let's get another. Rock solid. Right, let's get the rest in now. Right, there we go, we've got a fixing in one side and the other. I'm not going to bother putting one in the middle yet, just till we know that it's absolutely perfect. And also I can add an extra fixing in each anyway, just to make sure that it's going to be held there nice and securely. So, it's looking good. Let's offer up this big thing. And then you'll be able to see exactly what my plan is. So that is going to sit in there like that. Let's move you away a little bit so you can see. So I'll just undo this sliding bolt, which is lockable as well, which is good. That just sits there, and then you're ready. And drop this down. And there we have it. I have a desk to work at, a place to eat my dinner, and plenty of storage inside just to put all my sort of electrical kit. So that is just going to be absolutely awesome. Yes, well happy. I'm happy with these fixings at the top there because that's just screwing into a nice piece of solid oak. And at the bottom, I just need to stop this frame sort of like swinging out basically. So I've manufactured this out of a wall tie. And all I've done is just bent it a bit and put an extra couple of holes in. And if you can see, that is gonna sit at that point there. 
and then the cupboard will sit underneath here then I can drill down into it to hold it from swinging in and out. So that is the plan. I've given it a coat of this sort of copper paint just to sort of uh, stop it corroding. And there's the second one, which is gonna go over here. And then hopefully that's all I need to hold this cupboard in place. Hmm. I think I'm gonna catch those metal filings before it gets stuck in this carpet. That should have it. It's got a spring washer on back as well, so it holds it in place with all the vibrations going on in the car and all that. Let's tighten this one up now. So now I know where I am with all this, I am going to just work out exactly what I'm going to do with the electrics. So at the back of the cupboard itself is going to be a double socket, which will have USB charging points on it as well. So that's going to be mounted somewhere there, or maybe at the side slightly. I'm not too worried about that because that's easy enough to do. There's plenty of space in the back here as well to mess about with the wires, so that's a good thing. But I wanted to have a double socket nearer the back of the vehicle, just so if you're out the back, you can plug something in like power tools, anything like that. Uh, maybe a kettle and I've decided to get one of these boxes and attach it to this somehow so pretty much obviously on the other side of here but I can actually fit it the cupboard's going to come to about here so there's space there for it to go in so all I'll do is cut a hole out and slot it in there and that'll just allow me to plug in a couple of plugs at the back of the vehicle and obviously it's out of the way you can't see it so it's quite nice and neat as well with that so there we go on to the next <laughs> came out very well. I did it in one piece of carpet and I've got a joint along here but you cannot tell where that is. I've done all the necessary cutouts so this will just be all ready to take all the bits like the double socket there with two USB ports and then look at this we've even got a spy hole. <laughs> anyway let's go get this banged in the van. Onto this side panel here, and I've done exactly the same as what I did on the other side. I used the original panel that was in here as a template, added a few little bits here and there with some tape just to make it absolutely perfect, and then I've transferred that onto this board. And this board's been in and out about probably 12 times, I'd say, just to uh, make sure that it's absolutely perfect. But it is ready to fit. But I obviously need to make this fit around the cupboard that I'm go that's going to go sit in here. So what I've done is I've just cut out, no sorry, I've just drawn on a square section which is smaller than the cupboard and I'm going to offer it up and then I'm going to have to try measure and just keep taking a little bit more off until I get it absolutely perfect to sit around this thing. So that is the plan. So again, it's going to be in and out a lot more times just to get it spot on. Well, I've got the side panel fit and I'll tell you what, it is not easy trying to get something square to fit in something that is curved. But I think this is it. This is going to be the moment of truth and I have to have this perfect because really this is the, I'm going to say the main feature of the van. It's going to be this lovely floating cupboard which is just going to hang off the structure up here. So let's get my carpeted box. We'll just offer it up. 
and hope it will go in. <laughs> She's tight. Look at that, there we go. That is just spot on. Excellent. And although the cupboard's not in there, you can see that my working space is gonna be absolutely perfect here. So the next job is to get the cupboard, slot it in and see what that looks like. Just awesome, absolutely awesome is that. Just all this space under here just so I can add everything else I need. Extra storage, a fridge, a bike, the dog. Yes, multi-use, that's the main thing. Right, let's get that covered then. So here we have my military fire extinguisher box and I've done nothing to it apart from add a couple of bolts as you can see here and that just holds on. A little bit of this 20 millimeter webbing which will allow it to form a table in front of me and be self-supporting. So other than that, I've also cut off some uh, lugs at the back, these sort of stuck up here a little bit. So I just got the grinder on that. And all I've done is make this box, which when I made it, I had to allow enough tolerance for the carpet, because obviously that adds a couple of millimeters either side everywhere. So when I made it, I made it with some carpet on it. So hopefully it is super tight. So let's see how she looks. She is tight. Just slot that in. And that is, without any hands, self supporting. So, all I need to make sure is I've got the same dimension all the way around, just so when you look at it, it looks absolutely spot on rather than it being, I can't even twist it anyway, really. So, yeah, that is just perfect. So, I'll be sat on my little bed here. And then I'll be able to drop this down. Let's see if it holds itself. There you go, look at that. I have an office, I've got a place where I can just chill out, watch some YouTube, charge a few batteries and eat me dinner. Just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So yeah, next job then, I need to carpet this panel, insulate behind it, get the panel on properly, fit the box in properly, and then this can be attached once I've got all the wires finished off inside and second fixed. Ace, just ace. There's one more thing that I need to make sure works properly, otherwise all this is gonna come back out and I'll be starting again from scratch. And that is the fact that I need to make sure that the seats work in the back. Because this is not just going to be a camper for me, it's a multi-use vehicle and I do need to still get the kids in and everything. So I put this chair in position here, so let's just bring it back, clip it in place. Hang on, let's pop you down because I think I need two hands for this. So now I'll release this and bring it up and it has to fit here and if it doesn't, it's honestly coming back out and I probably will cry. You ready? Perfect, absolutely perfect. Look at that. I don't know if you can see down there, but we have got like a 10 millimeter gap and that's all I require to make this work properly. So there we go. We have a chair, a cupboard and a happy man. <laughs> The panel is complete and it's ready to go back on the wall into its permanent position. But firstly, I just need to finish off a few little bits, including the insulation. I've already fit this original board back in there and I've allowed enough space there for the speaker to go in. And now this has to be cut around all these blocks, all the fixing points. I need to bring all the wires through. Let's get on with it. I'm just gonna cut out what I need, foil tape the edges, and I'm doing the cutting with a set of scissors. 
simple. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that was hard work. I've done all the cutouts for these wooden blocks at the top and I've done some cutouts as well for where the fixings for the actual panel need to go. We have got two of the brackets there which have come through holes. I've got extra holes for bringing the cables out, the speaker there, and I'm hoping it's all going to work. I started off really by using one of the fixing points and attaching this metal plate here which just allowed me to then pull off and do all my measurements from that. So let's get the panel, stick it up on that wall and hopefully it works first time. And then it will be pretty much back to being just a van. Ah oh dear, all this effort, all this work and it's just covered up and you never see it ever again. It hopefully will be worth it anyway. Well, that fits beautifully. It's just whether the cupboard surround is going to slot in there now because obviously adding the carpet just changes that the dimensions a little bit and obviously the insulation might change the dimensions a little bit so let's hope so and i'm bleeding to death here as well <laughs> blood sweat no tears yet though so let's hope not might be if this don't fit anyway i'm gonna go tidy my thumb up and then we'll see if it goes in Come on, please work. Just please. Well, I've had a little bit of titivation to do just to take off the back couple of corners, really, just so it slots in because I made it very tight. And with that insulation added there, obviously it's just changed it slightly. So it hasn't been much of an effort. I haven't sworn much. <laughs> and now what I'm gonna do is, I've got a couple of fixings in the top. I just need to level this up. I'm currently sat on a very flat floor and uh, pretty much this is going to be the level I need it to go to. So I'm going to make sure that we are perfectly level with this. And there we go. Bob on. Bob on. So let's just have a quick look here and we are about three mil out there but i've not actually put all the fixings in the top yet you can see we've got a bit of flex here so that should sort it out so look at this bottom yeah we're about cock on there as well yes well there we go i've just put it in dry fit it just to see what it looks like and it's perfect it really is perfect completely seamless all the way around and this set in here it just slots in perfectly and there is just no gap anywhere honestly it is just cool absolutely ultra cool and now i can sit here drop down the desk do some work in my office or i can eat my dinner it's just cool look at that and the good thing about it is all this space underneath, just because this is floating, is free to use for other things. So it just makes this van more diverse and gives me more opportunity to do more things with it. So, yeah. Cool. Look at that. Mm. I just love it when I come up with an idea and it comes out. I see the final product like this and I just think, Brilliant. It is worth all that cog movement in your brain to uh, get to this stage and it just puts a smile on my face. I love it. Just cool. And do you know what? It's not even the coolest thing that's going in this van. I still haven't shown you my kitchen yet, which is hanging off the back two doors and that is next level up from this and also my bed, which is probably another level again. 
So stay tuned and hopefully I'll be able to show you exactly what I've come up with for that. Anyway, give the video a big fat thumbs up and if you want to contribute towards our adventures then you can buy me coffee in the buy me coffee link or come and join the Patreon. Anyway, from me and the absent blue, I'll see you another time. Take care. Thank you.